Five years ago, I had the privilege of introducing a remarkable story to the world. It was a story about terrorism, espionage, and loyalty. The unlikeliest friendship, and yes, redemption. The story revealed to the world that the number one intelligence asset to the Israeli Shin Bet was also the son of the leader of Hamas in the West Bank. He was responsible for exposing terror cells, preventing dozens of suicide attacks, and foiling assassination plots against Israeli officials. I've known him for more than a decade as Musab Hassan Youssef. You might know him as the Green Prince. Recruiting is an art. He asked me, uh, would you work for us? They needed someone like me. This is a big achievement. And I knew, like through his eyes, that was like the biggest uh, recruitment that he had so far. A few months after I agreed to work for the agency, my father's release from prison was arranged. My father needed someone to be his assistant, and he could not find better person than his oldest son that he can trust. We called him the Green Prince. Fast, he understood that this is his secret name in the Shin Bet, and he acted as a prince. I start to realize that we are living a lie. You know, and people are dying because of this lie. And this is why, you know, I continued because I needed to answer those questions for my soul. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Musab Hassan Youssef. from Ramallah, isn't it? I think so. This is why I'm late. <laughs> look, look what's going on with all the screens. Yeah, There's so many Musabs wow. and Avis around us. We're surrounded. <laughs> wow. You know that the first time that I saw you, back in 2004, the entrance to Ramallah, when your father was released from the Israeli jail. And you know, now we're here sitting in Apex Policy Conference, and I'm wondering, like, what was it like to, to be raised in Ramallah for a family of, of Hamas, Muslim Brotherhood? Your mother's family is coming from the Muslim Brotherhood. Your father is one of the founders of Hamas. What was it like? Well, first of all, it's a, a privilege, it's a great honor to be here uh, participating in this uh, very important uh, policy conference, uh, <laughs> truly. Sometimes I try to uh, rationalize, you know, what uh, the son of a Hamas leader doing in a, a big Jewish uh, event like this. Uh, and uh, the only way to... Uh, to see it, I came up with a theory. I think maybe I was, uh, in a previous life, a, a very bad Jew. <laughs> <laughs> then I was reincarnated in the household of a Hamas leader to work out my karmas. Yeah. This is why I'm here. Yeah. So, I think you're right. Thank you for your acceptance. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, you know, I know we are limited on time. Uh, I grew up... Um, believing in the conspiracy theory that Israel, America, the West hate Muslims, they have conspiracy, they're plotting day and night to destroy Islam, to destroy the Muslim world, and keep people in ignorance. Uh, this is in a simple way um, uh, what we were taught. Uh, I saw Israel as the enemy. I saw the United States of America as the greatest uh, enemy. And uh, we believed in this lie. Uh, I was uh, brought up in a state of delusion. 
uh, it took lots of effort to be able to break through the barriers and make it uh, all the way from Ramallah, not to uh, Washington DC, but from Ramallah mentality to uh, a higher truth uh, where I am able to see things more clearly, if I can say. And, it, and it's really fascinating because I remember that in the book you described the places that you lived in and you grew up just next to a cemetery, just next to a place where you saw all the shaheeds, all the martyrs so-called that were buried. I mean, it's quite awful to hear all the, these things that you heard. Yes, well, in theory, people are telling you all our suffering is because of Israel, the United States, and the West. Uh, practically, you see people dying on a daily basis. But uh, it was very hard to see through the lens of a child and make the connection that Yasser Arafat, then uh, all the Palestinian leaderships sitting in Qatar, in Turkey, in Tunisia, and other locations, sending children to die on checkpoints uh, to make more money. So they were corrupted. I could not see that the real enemy was the leadership of the Palestinians. I blamed everything on Israel. And this what confirmed uh, the lie to me. As now, many people believe in the lie and they see violence, they see children dying in Gaza, but they don't see that Hamas and other Palestinian factions are the actual enemy. So how on earth did you do this transformation? I mean, from someone lived and grew up to Hamas's family, then again, everything that we heard, and then you become an Israeli agent. I mean, what, did they put a gun to your head? Did they threaten you? I mean, the, the Shin Bet, the Israeli Shin Bet, did they torture you? What did they do? Look, I, I grew up suffering, as uh, many people who, uh, who suffer in that uh, region. And I always wanted to know the source of our suffering. Um, and you can say that I made many irrational decisions. I did not follow the mind. Uh, the mind uh, can be very uh, deceptive. I followed the heart and I saw a different truth, even though sometimes I had to get out of my uh, comfort zone. Uh, one of the uh, most irrational uh, decisions was to uh, work uh, for the State of Israel. It started with uh, uh, the motive of uh, revenge. Then it became... You wanted to kill your Shin Bet handler, right? Without specifying the goal, I was full of hatred and I thought I could penetrate the agency and this is why I said yes from the beginning. And that put me on a journey with the agency. Later on, I was surprised and shocked by the truth that I saw through the eyes of the other. And I saw a different truth than the wisdom on the Palestinian street. I remember that you told that the handler in one of the first meetings yeah. asked you, did you pray today? Did you eat? Instead of pushing you, instead of threatening you, he was very nice. Yes, well, Hamas used to tell us that Israel is going to uh, blackmail you. Israel will uh, put a gun and threaten to kill you if you don't work uh, for them. And here I am with I would say evil intention. You know, my intention was to kill them, was to take revenge. Uh, it was a very destructive uh, idea. Uh, and all I see, I see humanity. I see that they were uh, very caring about the human life in general. Yes, they were very hard on terrorism. They did not tolerate a terrorist. But in the meantime, uh, the way they looked at Palestinians in general, uh, civilians, uh, we were very careful uh, in all our operations uh, to make sure that civilians were not involved. And uh, that was a different uh, truth. And I, I needed to, uh, uh, to understand, you know, and come to uh, uh, a place where I can reconcile uh, with myself. On one hand, I believe in something. I believe in theory that Israel is all about to kill Palestinians. Israelis are thirsty for the Palestinian blood. But now here I am in the heart of the Israeli intelligence service. And I see that the intention is not to kill civilians, not to kill Palestinians. So this is where you know, I needed to be truthful to myself, where I stand. It was not about Israel now. 
It was not about Palestine. It was about me. Will I stand for my truth that I'm witnessing? Or will I just stick my head in the sand and obey other people's theories and scripture? Now, you write in your book that working for the Shin Bet was a kind of a game. And I remember a couple of crazy stories that you tell in this book that I, I thought that were phenomenal. Mm. Can you share with us one of the stories of how you managed to, to foil a suicide attempt and how you managed to foil even the Israeli authorities or the Israeli army that thought that you were still a Hamas wanted terrorist? Um, one day I had two strangers come into our house and they asked him for my father. Uh, my father was not at the house, he was uh, in a hide. So I told them, you cannot reach him, you have to go through me first. They said, we are five suicide bombers, we came from Jordan, and our uh, help was arrested last night. And we are afraid that Israel would know about our secret uh, location. We have our gear in this car, and we need a safe place just for a few hours. This is why we are here. Now. We were struggling. We were working very hard to uh, put our hand on a suicide bomber before they reach their target. And here I am, face to face, with five of them. Uh, of course, you know, I couldn't tell them, wait, let me call my Shin Bet handler and see what we can do. <laughs> um, and if you let them go, you will hear about them only in the news. So I had to take responsibility, and it was, uh, I was on my own. Um, I had two options, to stick my head in the sand and pretend that I did not see, even call my Shin Bet handler and tell him this is too dangerous for me, I'm out. They're not going to come and kill me. The other option was to do the right thing. Suicide bombers were targeting Palestinians, Americans, Israelis. They don't differentiate. Humanity is their target, even though they don't realize the danger and the destruction that they're doing. So basically, um, I told them, you sit in a safe house, wait for me, I'm in charge now. I give them a little bit of money, I took their car, uh, and uh, I put their car, I remember, in our garage, next to my mother and siblings. And I could not even explain to my mother why she should have uh, to, to uh, evacuate or leave the house. Um, so I called the agency and within, a about 30 minutes, the Israeli Prime Minister at that time decided to drop a bomb on their house. Um, I, I refused to be part of assassinations. Then the agency uh, made a plan to arrest them. They were arrested and they mentioned my name, that I give them money and put them in a safe house. Now the agency on one hand could not afford to arrest me because I would leave a huge vacuum in the area. Yeah. We were part of many other operations. And if they leave me outside, I will become suspicious. Collaborate. And Hamas would yeah. uh, kill me. So uh, the only way to save, uh, to save my life was to deceive uh, the uh, Israeli army, to s deceive Hamas, and to deceive uh, the uh, journalists uh, like yourself. Um, and th the game that we played was to send Israeli uh, uh, special. defense forces, special forces, um, to uh, make it look like they are trying to arrest me, and I escape in a miraculous uh, way. And they destroyed uh, the house, right? Uh, they did not destroy the house uh, completely, but they evacuated, first of all, my mother uh, and my uh, brothers. Uh, they launched a missile into the house when I did not surrender. While you were sitting somewhere safe yes. with the Shin Bet sending you there. Yes, I was actually sitting in a safe house looking at uh, TV, Al Jazeera, uh, seeing uh, our house uh, on uh, fire. And I know that uh, the whole thing is just uh, a game. And you became like one of the most famous terrorists in the West Bank because of that. Right. After this event, I became the most uh, wanted uh, person in Ramallah area. When I went back home, my mother told me, disappear, don't come back. And uh, my father was very afraid uh, for me. Other Hamas leadership was now... Uh, responsible for my security and my safety. So they end up putting me in all the safe houses where other <laughs> wanted Hamas people hanging out. And this way we penetrate the Hamas uh, security and military wing, and we crack down the entire Hamas uh, military wing in the, in the West Bank. Yeah. Amazing.
Now, I want to ask you something personal. Sure. You know, at 2008, you called me. Uh, you said, hey, what's going on? Where are you, man? I said, I'm in Israel. Where are you? You said, I'm in San Diego. <laughs> okay. I was planned to go with APAC to San Diego. And you said that you have a very special story for me. Hmm. Why on earth did you call me? Not anyone else, like Palestinian journalists, American journalists, you decided to call me. Well, you have been to uh, our house, to my father's office. You saw me in action. And uh, your perception of me at that time was just another Hamas member, uh, an assistant for Hamas top leader. You didn't know that I was... Uh, a good source. Uh, thank you, I appreciate it, thank you. <laughs> um, at that time, you didn't know that I was uh, a part of the uh, Israeli operation. And uh, I thought, if I tell you the story, you would be able to make the connection and uh, piece uh, the puzzle in much better way than any other person who did not meet me. And also, uh, the story came on a very uh, high personal uh, uh, price. Um, and I did not want uh, the media to come and take this personal struggle and twist it and bend it to serve some uh, other agendas. Uh, the reason to come out of this story, um, truly, to help an entire generation, Palestinian generation, and Israeli generation, uh, to see things for what they are. Uh, sometimes we trust our perceptual ability, but uh, apparently our senses are uh, very deceptive. And there is uh, always uh, a different truth beneath what seems or appears. And with that said, I thought, Bring in the story to the region, would help people see things for what they are, help them mature, and take responsibility. Thank you. Thank you. Now, one last question. Sure. So, you're here at APAC, in front of thousands of uh, pro Israel Americans, and you've spoken for, for APAC across the country. What is it about Israel and what, is, what about this cause that inspires you to share your story like that? I mean, surrounded with so many people that looks at you and say, he's a hero. Did you imagine back then in the days that we met each other in the West Bank that one day you will find yourself like that with 15,000 people around you thinking of you as a hero? You know, when I was first introduced to uh, Christ consciousness, I learned how to love my enemy unconditionally and was the core of my motive. And this is what put me on this crazy uh, experiment, irrational experiment uh, with truth. And I did not expect that the uh, Israeli nation and they, when I say the Israeli nation, I don't mean uh, uh, the Israel uh, political uh, boundaries, not Israel uh, as a government. I'm talking about the nation that extends uh, from Latin America to uh, North America to Asia, everywhere. Uh, Israel to me is not only a political uh, regime. Israel is, uh, is light. Israel is philosophy. Israel is uh, values and ethics. Uh, and uh, I cannot imagine the world uh, without Israel. Uh, Israel, thank you. To me, to see, to see the love and the unconditional support now truly lifts me up. I thought for many years that I was alone. And that was a lie. I believe we are all on the same uh, field of consciousness where, you know, there is persecution. I see a nation that faced a catastrophe like the Holocaust came over that catastrophe and found strength to build, to uh, establish 
an amazing state, give humanity values, ethics, unconditionally, show an example of unconditional love and forgiveness. This is where I stand. It's not about politics. It's not about uh, anything else. To me, uh, I'm part of this process. I'm very proud to be here today, and I really appreciate uh, that uh, uh, the organizers uh, 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 invited me to this event. Gentlemen, Musab Hassan Yusuf. Thank you. Thank you very much.